Hi everyone, today I will be going over my simple DSLR telescope workflow to capture the moon. I've been using this workflow for about nine years and it's my most go-to workflow because it's simple, easy and gets you results real quick. And uh, it doesn't require a lot of equipment and gears and cables, uh, basically only a DSLR camera attached to a telescope. Of course, there are other workflows, like including a dedicated astronomy camera, for example, a monochrome or a colored uh, camera. But uh, we're not going to go over this workflow today. I'll just keep it simple. We'll just keep this workflow. And I will go over these more complicated workflows in uh, future videos. First, let me walk you through the gear that I will be using in this video. The first thing we have here is the telescope. It's a ZWO 130 millimeters uh, quadruplet refractor. Uh, it captures really sharp pictures and it has a 1000 millimeter focal length. This telescope is mounted on a CEM 70 IOPTROM mount. This mount is powered by a Jackery battery. I also have my camera here. This camera is a Canon 90D. I've used this camera for about nine years. And the camera attaches to the telescope via this T-mount. This T-mount comes in two sizes. The first size is the two inches and the other size is the 1.25 inch. And I like the two inches because the two inches does not cause uh, vignetting when I'm doing long exposures of the moon. Uh, you can see here I attached a 2 inch IR cut filter. This filter helps in uh, reducing the artifacts that can be caused by the atmospheric turbulence. I also have a remote shutter. If you want to take a series of shots, you can use this or you can use the intervalometer of the DSLR. And I also have a finder scope. So this finder scope helps me point at objects and stars and it has to be aligned with the telescope which is a tricky step that, that can be difficult for the people who are using the telescope for the first time. But with some work you will figure it out. Usually you will point the telescope at a well visible object and then you will calibrate and adjust your finder scope to where the telescope is pointing. Anyway, all the gear I'm listing here has links in the description of the video. Now let's go over some tips that will help you get the sharpest images possible of the moon. First, the telescope's temperature needs to be equivalent to the ambient surrounding temperature. The reason is the, uh, there are some, uh, some heat waves that can be emitted from the telescope that can, that can cause blurriness in the pictures. And this can happen if the telescope was in a hot garage and the outside was colder. If you start taking images right away, the images will be blurry. So it's recommended that you wait for some time, usually about an hour, with the telescope outside to cool down to the ambient temperature before you start using it. The second tip is making sure the moon is as high as possible in the sky or at the highest uh, elevation possible. And the main reason is because as the moon gets lower in the horizon, the atmospheric turbulence gets thicker. Now remember, the atmosphere acts as a big lens and the more we go to the horizon, the uh, thicker the atmosphere is and the more turbulence, the more diffraction and the worse the seeing. So the closer you shoot, the closer to the horizon you shoot, the more blurry the images will be. So again, make sure the moon is as high as possible. The higher the moon or the celestial object in the sky, the more details and the, the, the sharper your images will be. A few other things, make sure your optics are clean and uh, make sure that if you have a large reflector to collimate it, this refractor here does not need collimation, but if you have a large instrument that needs collimation, make sure to follow the manufacturer instructions in the manual or check out YouTube videos about collimating your instruments. Now I have two big instruments back here and I'm gonna go over collimating them in future videos. Now the next step is starting to shoot the moon. Here I have the mount and the mount is roughly polar aligned to Polaris or the North Star. 
And I know that because I made, I made some marks on the ground. I know that where this dolly parks is rough polar alignment of this telescope. The next step is turning on your mount. Now for this step, because all what you need is having the mount track the moon, you can skip the star alignment routines and uh, entering the time and date on all these stuff. Now for the mount I'm using here, I don't need to do that. It, it's usually done automatically. It has uh, a GPS and a sync device that can tell what time it is and the location. For what I'm doing here, all I have to do is just turn the mount on. So you're gonna, the mosquitoes are already uh, attacking me here. So you're gonna turn on your mount for my mount here, it automatically can detect its location and the time, which is, which is great. And uh, I'm going to click zero here, which is going to start the tracking. So basically, the, uh, the telescope is already tracking. And I'm going to press number nine, because number nine is the fastest slowing. Now, because the mount already knows that it's aligned to Polaris and it's at the zero position, I can go at select and slew and I'll just let the uh, telescope roughly slew at the moon. So it's gonna go ahead and roughly slew at the moon right there. We are pointed at the moon. The next step is making sure you're well focused and uh, then you can use uh, the uh, built-in timer or the external intervalometer to take single row pictures of the moon. I usually leave uh, three to four seconds between shots and I like my ISO to be at 100 which can get you less noise and you want to have a shutter speed faster than one over 125 seconds. I usually take about 100 pictures. The highest number of pictures I did was about 500, but it will take you way longer to process these images. So I'm gonna take about 200 pictures for today, and then we're gonna process these pictures next. So uh, we're just done taking pictures. I got 200 single pictures of the moon, and uh, let's go and uh, see how we're gonna process them. All right. Now let's process our moon images. I have my moon images right here on the SD card. I have Lightroom here. I already imported them to, to Lightroom. It's a straightforward process. You just drag drop them into the library tab here and import and you will have your moon images in Lightroom. For the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna stack 100 images and as you can notice here those images were taken during nighttime because that's my usual workflow I take the pictures of the moon during the nighttime so those are different than the pictures in the first part of the video now in terms of the workflow I am going to use Lightroom then I'm gonna use PIPP to center the pictures, then auto stacker, then uh, I'll sharpen the images in Registax. I know this is a little bit tedious of a workflow. There are other workflows that are currently present. For example, I know you can use WaveSharp instead of Registax. And there is also a new software called the Planetary System Stacker, which basically does everything that PIPP, Autostacker, and Registax does. So I will be going over these workflows in future videos. I'll just go over this workflow because this is what I've been uh, using and uh, I wanted to share that workflow with you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select 100 pictures of the, uh, the moon pictures that I have here. Now, as you can see, there are some minor edits that I like to do usually here. Uh, for example, I'm going to play with the temperature until the histogram here is balanced. So you see, I'm going to drag the histogram to the right. You can see it's not balanced here, you see. So just balance your histogram through the temperature like this. Then if you want to change the tint a little bit to make the moon look more natural, you can. And I'm going to increase 
the vibrance and the saturation like this and you know because of that there is some fringing or chromatic aberration so you're gonna go down all the way and you're gonna select remove chromatic aberration and that improves the, the fringing a little bit and as you can see because my refractor is pretty sharp the image is pretty decent it's not bad but the stacking will even bring more details and remove the noise that you know you can see here the noise and will enhance the sharpness as well now one one more thing if if you export these images and they're too big it's gonna take longer so I like to crop the images like this and keep some range around the moon because the moon moves during this the shooting so I want to make sure the the moon is framed here so I'm gonna crop and then I'm gonna sync. So now all my selected frames have the settings pasted. And I go between the first and the last image and I make sure that the moon is still in the frame. I'll just adjust my cropping here and then I'm gonna sync again. And after that, I'm going to export the uh, images. The export settings are straightforward. I, uh, I basically set it to JPEG maximum quality and I name it stack whatever and then I press enter and this will export the images into a folder. All right, now that our exported images are done, I'm gonna open PIPP. I'm gonna select all these frames, drag drop them here click OK and you're gonna select solar lunar full disk and then in the processing options you're gonna deselect convert to monochrome deselect enable cropping in the quality options you're gonna uncheck the enable quality estimation because auto stacker is gonna do that for you you don't need to change anything in the output options and just do the processing and click start processing and that will basically center the moon frames in each picture so that when you stack them you don't have to worry about aligning and positioning the moon disk in the center PIPP will do all that for you all right now that PIPP has finished we're gonna go ahead and select all the frames that PIPP output for us and we're going to open auto stacker and we're going to drag drop all the frames into auto stacker here now you can see there are several settings here mainly the first one here to the left you want to make sure that you adjust these settings for example if if the moon is like this you can adjust the width like that and i usually leave my brightness at five for the size of my picture, the AP, the AP point size is 256. You can change that however you like. Basically, you, you don't want them too small and you don't want them too big. So for the size of my image, 250, 272 is, is usually what's, what works best. If you go here on the right window, you can see I already selected my settings. You want to put planet dynamic background check this box here and i'm gonna go ahead and click analyze uh, either way you really don't have to understand this quality graph too much click the analyze and and based on your preference you can stack whatever percentage of the frames you want i usually stack 50 percent of my frames but really there is no rule you can stack more or less it really doesn't matter so i'm gonna select 50 and i'm gonna select stack all right, and now stacking is complete. We're gonna go back to your original, um, to your PIPP folder, and it will name, the, it will create a new folder with the percentage of the stack, and this will be your stacked image. And you can see it's a slightly blurry, but the noise disappeared. So that's one of the advantages here. So the next step is we're going to open Registax and we're going to drag drop our image to Registax. 
and I use Registax to enhance the sharpness. Recently, Wave Sharp has been introduced um, a few years ago, basically, not recently, but it, it basically does the job. I just haven't made my way through it yet. With the moon, basically, uh, I've been able to stack planets, but with the moon, I haven't figured out a few things yet. So I'll just go ahead and do Registax for today, and I will go over Wave Sharp later. So here you have the wavelets already open. So you're going to play with the wavelets here to increase the sharpness to your liking. Now here, as you can see, I really don't need to do a lot. So if I just do a little bit, I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. As you can see here, it starts to create this, those rings, the white, the, the, the dark and light rings. To remove that, you can go ahead and select denoising de-ringing and you can play with the denoise de-ring settings here like this and this and you can see the de-ringing is gone and then you can also play with the denoise setting that will remove the noise here like this again to me this is a little bit too much but it's all based on preferences so there is no right or wrong i like to keep my edits to the minimum but again you can do however you want at the end so basically let's say that you're happy with this you're gonna select do all and uh, it's gonna stack all the panels now one thing if wherever you click is gonna do like the preview of the stack so you don't have to stack the whole thing all over because you see it takes it takes a minute to stack the whole image so if you click just on at the center where you're looking at it's gonna stack only that panel and you can modify these settings here if you go to settings and you can change the processing area right here so basically where you click is going to be your processing area now it finished stacking so i'm going to save the image here and let's say um, I'm gonna name it Stacked Sharpened Moon. And this is our image right here. Again, you can change the settings to your liking. I have a little bit of noise here. You can use some denoising software or you can denoise it in Photoshop. One more thing I do is I go to Photoshop here and I increase the saturation a little bit. A few additional things I do in Photoshop. I do the auto tone which adjusts the tone and the brightness of the image to make it better. And I go to Hue Saturation, Image Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And I increase the saturation a little bit to bring the uh, color details of the Sea of Tranquility and the mineral colors of the moon. And this is pretty much everything for the tutorial. You can see I have a pretty detailed image here and I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in future videos to discuss other workflows and more softwares and techniques. And until then, clear skies. Mm -hmm.